In the morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, how are you today? You're listening to the Sunday edition of the St. Mark Bemidji Podcast, brought to you by GAC, the green sticky cereal that won't come off of your teeth. Ever. It's part of your balanced breakfast. Find it in your local grocery cereal aisle or in the nuclear waste repository in New Mexico. I want to thank you for joining us today. It doesn't matter how high quality the podcast is or how meaningful the message is if no one ever listens to it. You'll be listening to a reading from the Bible and a meditation on God's Word in just a few short seconds. Won't you share it with someone? It's as easy as clicking the share button on your favorite podcast app. Don't have one? Visit newpodcastapps.com and download one today. Today's meditation is titled, Go in Peace. It's based on this reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for a revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. May you be blessed by today's meditation. So we're at the end of another year. And as you look back and ponder the events and the things that happened in 2023 for you personally, are there any things that jump out at you as high moments? Maybe it was a birth of a child or a grandchild. Maybe you went on some big vacation. Maybe there was a little baby in your family that got baptized. Maybe there was a wedding. Maybe there was a reunion of uh, of friends that haven't seen each other for a long time. A high point. Something that just maybe for that brief flicker of a moment, The world seemed right. Evil was held in abeyance. Everything was okay. A high point. Do you have a couple of those? Maybe just one? Maybe more? This morning in the Gospel according to Luke, we see this man who had gone through the ups and downs many years of life. And we see his high point. We see the the moment that meant more to him than anything that had happened in his life. 
And how he must have reveled in that moment. There was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. We don't really know how old Simeon was, but presumably since it says this, he was probably pretty old. I think, you know, if you ask people, you know, you see ads on TV or you talk to people, generally speaking, people do things, they exercise, they eat right, they do those sorts of things to live a long time or increase their lifespan. Simeon didn't have a choice. And why we might want a long life, what is the curse of that? The other side of that coin. You kind of get sick of living here, don't you? I visited a shut-in here this past week, and that was something that she expressed to me. She's in her 90s, and she's about done with this. And I don't think at this point it would matter if she was in perfect health. Trials of one year, one decade after another, bleed into the other one. Same, same story, different book, year in, year out. You lose friends, you lose neighbors. Sometimes even your own passions, the things that you love to do, become dull and stale. You want out. You want nothing more than just to be done, just to be at peace. Finished with this. No doubt, assuming Simeon was old, very old. He had seen and experienced many of these emotions. How many friends did, uh, had left him through death? How many of his own passions had seemed dull or redundant at this point? He sings this emotional song of praise to show that he very well might have, uh, that, that, that he, he had felt this hurt, this pain, Deeply. What a moment he gets to hold Jesus. He gets to hold the Lord's Messiah in his arms. And it's, it's like God fulfills his promise to him. Here. Here it is. And it's his ticket out. <laughs> He's done. I've seen him. Here he is. Here's the consolation of Israel. When, when Isaiah Lived, who lived 700 years beforehand, said, Comfort, comfort, my people Israel. There He is, flesh and blood, in my arms. Truly, this was a, a high point for Him. An answer to all the suffering and the sadness and the trials because of sin. So He lifts His, song, his, his voice in song. Sovereign Lord, as You have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Christ incarnate, the Word of God, the, 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 the Word of God, the promise of God made flesh in His arms. That's a truth that I think we are so close to on the regular. That the Word of God was made flesh. We all know John chapter 1, verse 1, at least I hope. In the, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And now that Word is with us. We know that truth. And it's often so close to us, and we hear it so often that we forget the wonder of it. You know, the God of Islam, for example, Allah, is, um, is viewed by Muslims as all-powerful, omnipotent, Everywhere, all the time, many of the same things that we would attribute to God. But He is this overbearing force. He's not dependent on anyone. And when He looks down at us, we're kind of like measly little ants that run around. I saw this interview with a... With a Muslim man not all that long ago, and this is one of the things that he was struggling with as he was considering Christianity, that the idea 
that God Himself would be dependent on a mother. Be dependent upon a father. To be held in the arms of an old man. To virtually anybody else in the world, that's an impossible thought. And this is This truth is something that rivals the very miracle of our existence itself, that the Creator would become His creation. So yes, Simeon sings this song of peace, and what a perfect line for anybody who holds Jesus in their arms. What God has done, what He has promised, that He has been faithful to His Word, that He has made the impossible possible. You know, something that I'll, I'll admit, I like the new hymnal. Let me just put that out there. I do like the new hymnal. But one thing that I do miss is that at the end of the communion liturgy in the old hymnal, we always sang this song. The song of Simeon. Right after communion when we held the Lord in our hands. Another miracle that confounds the mortal mind But Jesus promised this to us, didn't He? Here I am, this is My body, this is My blood given and shed for you in, with, and under the bread and wine. I'm with you. And He keeps that promise to us every single time, every single single time, every year. It doesn't matter when. When we gather, when we stand here at the altar and we receive the Lord's Supper, that's what we get. It shouldn't be a surprise to us that the Lord keeps His Word. But for a believer to receive the Lord in the sacrament is a thrill that's really no less than what Simeon experienced. Like what the, like, like what, when we receive it into our hands or, or we, we, we sip the wine, that's the peace of God, full and free forgiveness. We taste and see that the Lord has indeed been good to us. We see that we have been set free. This is the answer. This is what Christ came to do for you. For me. For everybody. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord gives Himself to us as He was given to this world through Mary. As He was given and handed over to Simeon. As He gave His perfect life and His innocent death on the cross as promised. So that you and I might know that we might have that peace and carry that peace with us that the Lord never fails to keep His Word. And what the, the truth of what Jesus says that the Lord's Supper is in communion, and I know we're not having it today, but it's a good feather to tuck in our hat. And the truth of what Jesus says cannot be undone. You know, no matter what changes in our life, financial status or health or wealth or whether we are happy or whether we are sad or whether it's been a good year, whether it's been a bad year. Jesus says, this is my body and this is my blood. That doesn't change. Nothing can change that. It is what He says it is. What peace the Lord's servants have in His promises. And we can gladly, we can, we can enjoy call ourselves His servants just like Simeon did. Servants who receive just like Simeon did. Servant who is made glad by all these blessings of God like Simeon are moved to sing and to pray and to praise and to give thanks to let the Word of God dwell among us richly as we talked about in the children's message. And such a servant does so because we want the world to know the reason and the purpose for living. Indeed, the reason that we can keep going one foot in front of the other, year after year, decade after decade, that we can go in peace. You know, those are the, the words that, are, that, that conclude the blessing in communion, aren't they? And the pastor stands up here, uh, and he, you receive the bread, you receive the wine, And the pastor says, go in peace. Amen. Or depart in peace. Amen. That means 
Go on. Get out of here. You can't stay here. This is Mount of Transfiguration stuff. And what does Peter want to do when he's up on the mountaintop? Lord, let's build three shelters. Let's stay here. I've seen your glory. I've held you. I've, I, 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 I behold you in glory. This is about what I've been waiting for for three years. What does Jesus say? We go down that mountain. And it's not going to get any better when we go down that mountain either. In fact, it's going to get worse. But his disciples follow him in peace. And when we come up here, we receive the full and free forgiveness. We commune with our Lord Jesus. He promises to come to us, and he does. We hold him in our hands. And then we must go. We must walk out those doors, back out into the world, back out into all the trials and the tribulations and the difficulties that this life has for us. You know, this is a blessing for Simeon. Because we don't really know how much longer that he, uh, he lived after this, but I'm assuming probably not all that much longer considering he was very old. Simeon knows that because he's held Jesus in his arms, he can literally depart this life in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. In just this sentence, in just this, 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 this song of praise of Simeon, we see how he looks at life and at history through the prism of God's Word. He ignores what seems to be and focuses his attention on what actually is and how it's possible from God's standpoint. That he has seen the salvation. He's held it in his arms. You know, you think about communion, it doesn't seem like much. It's just bread and wine. Well, what about Simeon? Same thing, right? This is little nondescript baby boy brought by parents of no particular note. A carpenter and his wife. They didn't get led in by angels. There was no fanfare that brought them in. It was just Mary and Joseph. And maybe they were, you know, as they were walking up there, they, they, they were giving the offerings of the poor. They were giving those, the offerings of the dove. These weren't rich people. There was nothing that set them apart. Simeon knew. Simeon knew by the grace of the Holy Spirit from the perspective of God's Word, there He is. There's the One who is salvation even if the world takes no note of Him. Even if everybody else passes Him by. Even if no one else cares. This is Him. And this is exactly what the world and really all of our sinful natures want to do. How can Simeon call this child the light of the Gentiles and of all nations? The Gentiles around us and the world by and large, they close their eyes and shun what the Word says. How can Simeon say that this child would be the glory of Israel? It was Israel that killed him. It was the chief priests and the teachers of the law that were supposed to be the ones that were their Israel shepherds leading them in, 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 the, in the way of the Word. But they had forgotten it. And now, Simeon says these incredible things. And it would put the exclamation point on what Simeon says as he says that, that, that he would be rejected by Gentiles, killed by Gentiles, killed by Jews. It would put the exclamation point on what Simeon says that he would cause such a divide in the rising of falling of many in Israel. And think of Mary. She hears these words. I couldn't wrap her mind around it or maybe didn't even really want to think about it. That in about 30 years or so, that a sword would pierce her heart. She watched her firstborn suffer and die. Let the world, let the sinful nature view Him as they will. 
Let his own despise and reject him. The fact is that he is nevertheless the light of peace on earth. The only light possible for we who must perish. For he is indeed the only glory of Israel. The whole reason for the the story of ancient history. If Gentiles pass him by, they do so in the darkness of their own choosing. A darkness in which they will stumble over the, 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 the cliff, so to speak. You know, there's, there's um, uh, for, for, for believers and for non-believers, the Christian church is really nothing to you know, uh, raise an eyebrow at. You know, we, 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 we are sinners too. Maybe you've heard this uh, from, from multiple different people that they don't really, you know, I don't really want to go to church because there are sinners there. You know, I, I, the, those people are hypocrites. You know, and, and it's almost cliche at this point to, to say the, the, what follows that. Well, we always got room for one more. But, but it's true. The church is really full of sinners. That's why we are here. And I think that's something that the world forgets. What, 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 what do people expect the church to be? Perfect people walking around? No, that, healthy people don't go to a doctor. We are sinners. We need a Savior. And we need a Savior that we know is for us. If Jesus did come with trumpet blasts, if He was led into the the temple that day by angels, how would I know that He's for me? He might be for the rich guy down the street. He might be for the powerful. But how do I know He's for me? Here He is. He sheds His first drops of blood there at His circumcision. He's brought into this, this, this temple. He's held in the arms of Simeon. All of these things are a reminder to us that we have peace. This is this, the high point of, of Simeon's life. And it recalls for us how we let this Word of God dwell among us richly, that we sing these songs, that we surround ourselves in the message of God's Word, so that when we depart in peace, when we leave this place, we carry these things with us. Now, whether we are happy, whether we are sad, whether we're having a good year, whether we're having a bad year, I'm sure you all see those things. Um, you know, the, 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 the talking heads on the news I can't even tell you how many times I've seen stuff like that on TV. Well, we're in for it in 2024. Something big's going to happen. Maybe even before the presidential election, there's all this anticipation. Does it matter? Does it really matter? In the end, it doesn't. Who is our peace? Who will last? Whose peace do you have that will call you out of this world? Just like Simeon. Lord, I know You. Lord, I've held You in my arms. Now let Your servant depart in peace. The things of this world, the the things that people get so excited about, at the end of the day, they don't really matter. For the believer, we have bigger fish to fry. We are called to be a light to lighten the Gentiles. To share with them this message. This is who we are. This is what Christ has done. I am a sinner. He is my Savior. And guess what? He's yours too. May He ever be for us that peace, that consolation, that salvation. May through our lives He always remain as our light and our our only glory no matter what comes or what goes. When we fall into the darkness of of guilt or, or sin, recall that He calls us back to Himself, that He shines on us with the brilliance and the radiance of the Gospel message that speaks of free and full forgiveness that says go and live in peace. And when we experience suffering or pain or loss, That Jesus brings us out of that darkness, out of that fear, out of our own doubts, and gives us the assurance and the promise in His unfailing Word 
that He is still in control and will bring everything to pass for our ultimate benefit and for our ultimate good. That we can go in peace. I was just talking to somebody about this out in the narthex before church. Doesn't that kind of blow your mind a little bit? Every single person in here, every single person in this room can look back at some point in their life and say, I know why that happened. I didn't understand it at the time, but I get it now. Right? Without fail. Everybody can say that. When we think of Romans chapter 8, verse 28, the Lord works all things to the good of those that love Him. How is that true for each and every individual? That the, world, that the Lord works through the things in the world to bring things about for me. For me. I can say that. For me. You can say that for you. That He has bent space and time and matter and moved nations and all these things for you. He put His own Son, the greatest of all these things, of all these happenings in our life, is this truth and knowing this truth that He put His own Son into this. Into this world. Made Him flesh and blood. Gave Him a mom and a dad. Made Him weak. Capable of suffering and dying. And for Him, you think about the the years of Jesus' life, they didn't go smoothly. Though He even was the Son of God. He had His ups and His downs. But how did He go out? He went out on a cross. But never for a moment did He doubt. Never for a moment did He fear or question His Father's love for Him. Jesus went in peace, confident and hopeful of the resurrection. That's the same hope that you and I have. That's the same gospel message that we carry with us. And even, even, even in, in days of uh, uh, when we experience suffering and pain and loss, Jesus brings us out of our darkness and out of our fear and out of our doubt with this unfailing promise, with this unfailing world, word that He is still in control, that we can go in peace, that when we do even have our days of gladness, that He's the one to whom we give glory. And even if death should draw near, there is light even at the end of that. He consoles us with the assurance of eternal life and peace. Not temporary. Not for a moment where everything seems right. But peace eternal. Yes, even though we're not literally Simeon holding a baby, we have seen Jesus. We have seen His salvation. Every time we come into this room, every time we open up a Bible, every time we read His Word, every time we join with Him in the sacrament at the altar, at the Lord's Supper, that Gospel, that mercy, that forgiveness that's proclaimed therein speaks to us every single time we see it, every single time we hear it, every time we open it. Without fail, year in, year out, day after day after day until life's end. So even though we're 2,000 some odd years removed from Simeon, we're blessed to be able to sing the exact same song of praise, the same song of peace. May it be the Lord's will that we ever go in that peace. For we have seen Jesus. Our light, our comfort, our salvation, and our peace for living in this darkened world. Let us ever go in that peace of Christ. Amen. I sincerely pray that today's meditation on God's Word has enriched you. Didn't get enough of God's Word? Are you missing out on that in-person fellowship? We hold divine services right here in Bemidji, Minnesota at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday school and adult Bible study is also offered between our Sunday services at 9.15 a.m. We also live stream our Sunday divine service at 8 a.m. 
You can ensure that you are notified when a stream is live or a new podcast is available by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's easy to find by typing in St. Mark Bemidji in the search bar and clicking on the subscribe button. Want to listen to meditations the way I do every day? Subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Go to podcastindex.org and search for St. Mark Bemidji to find us. This is our fifth year producing this podcast, and there is a large archive of devotional material online available if you want to learn more about God and His Word. Visit www.stmarksbemidji.org or look in the show notes in this podcast for a link to this and many other meditations on God. If you have any questions or you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website, which is once again www.stmarksbemidji.org. May God bless the rest of your day.